Hey, welcome back, guys. It's still Wednesday. It's still SJU. We're still here. So are you. Uh, I'm Joe, filling in for Roth. Dan's here. Right. Spence is here. Ed's here. Uh, most of our team is sick today. Billy is doing every job that you don't currently see in front of you. <laughs> mm. Send him some love on Twitter. Like a one-man band. Godspeed, Billy business. Where's Billy? my coffee, Billy? <laughs> Billy, we have no coffee. And there are guests in the lobby. And uh, uh, yeah, hey buddy, you're doing great. Thank he you, He has sir. a drumstick tied to the end of a guitar that he's using to uh, <laughs> switch camera switch angles. Cameras while he's, like, well, my collar was all weird. He was supposed to iron this thing. <laughs> and we were kind of dicks for not saying anything. Oh, yeah. We just let Ed go on camera. You know what? That's what kind of day it is. Uh, Looking like Iron Fist. <laughs> 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 to be fair, I was completely oblivious. Um, <laughs> but there's so many reasons you don't look like Iron Fist. <laughs> Guys, let's talk about Damon Lindelof's weird open Watchmen letter that he wrote about HBO's <laughs> Watchmen series. Uh, remix! It's a remix! DJ Manhattan! <laughs> All right, so David Lindelof, uh, Damon uh, Lindelof, uh, took to Instagram to share a letter to fans about what they can expect from the upcoming HBO Watchmen series, and apparently, oh, yeah. oh, there's that face, and apparently what they can expect is just dense weirdness. Um, so, Lindelof wrote a letter in the style of something Dr. Manhattan would have written in the original graphic novel, which switched from prose to letters to, to comic, um, sort of charting his own experience as a fan with the project, uh, what they can expect, how it's influenced his life, what fans can expect from the show, uh, no, why Jesus. they're doing the show the way they're doing it. <laughs> Guys, now Billy's just throwing chairs. This is, um... Is this the end? Is this what the end looks like, Joe? <laughs> Slowly collapsing. I feel like we're in, like, an Inception level four dream, and, like, just things are starting to fall apart. <laughs> yeah. Right We've now, gone too deep. Well, right now, Billy's just fighting a dude in the hallway, yeah. like, on the side of the wall. We're all waiting for the kick. They're like, do you want to bring the guy for half day? I was like, no, I got it. No, you got this. this. Oh, I got it. Dude, you're killing it. It's all good. <laughs> It's all good. At least everything's spelled correctly on the TriCaster today. Um, oh, shade. <laughs> shade. JTE, get well, buddy. And it's not actually because that says Screen Junkies new. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, we have no funding. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, where are we? Okay, so this thing, it's a really long letter. We're, not, we're gonna break down sort of some of our favorite parts of it, both for weirdness and for giving information about what the show's actually going I to be. I wish he'd written it in uh, uh, Rorschach's voice. Yeah. That would have been amazing. Oh, yeah. New but show. Do <laughs> remix. HBO remix. Everybody laughs. laughs. Ah. <laughs> it's got some bean juice on it. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to keep barreling through this because some commenters don't like it when I laugh and have fun. Uh, sure. So, but I am going to read these and then I want your Rorschach version of okay. them because that's, that's how we're going to do that. <laughs> that good. So he wrote, uh, we have no desire to adapt the 12 issues Mr. Moore and Mr. Gibbons created 30 years ago. Thank you for not pretending you're on a first name basis with these gentlemen, Damon. Uh, those Alan. Issues Alan. Damon. <laughs> Alan. Uh, those issues are sacred ground and will not be retread nor recreated nor re produced nor rebooted they will however be remixed um i don't really know what that means no but then he goes on to continue this tortured analogy oh yeah the bass lines and those familiar tracks are just too good and we'd be fools not to sample them like puff daddy <laughs> like Padiddy. You know, i've always just like thought Padid. that uh, damon Lindelof. Was the P diddy of our time? <laughs> yeah, it was the P diddy of uh, very underrated a puzzle box, underrated bass lines in yeah. Watchmen. One hundred percent. The mid range yeah. gets all the credit. Yeah, but, <laughs> the bass drops. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Everyone loves the Yanny in Watchmen, and not, <laughs> no not enough for the Laurel. The Laurel, yeah. No one loves the Laurel. Uh, those original twelve I issues. I reference the uh, <laughs> Oh wow, we jumped from uh, already old. Less than a week. It's on the fast. The really, uh, really going like, oh, you're going back to that. That was uh, five days ago. <laughs> Let us catch up. We're very tired. <laughs> You do a reference, somebody goes, what are those? Uh, like, which, uh. still, still a little hurt that we did a what are those reference and everyone was like, you guys are old and stupid. And Black Panther did that and they were like, brilliant. Trust yep. me, there were plenty, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I see the back end on every comment and that's, that's fair. for us, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> that's completely fair. Uh, uh, so we move from DJ um, 
DJ comparisons to Bible stuff. Uh, those original 12 issues are our Old Testament. When the New Testament came along, it did not erase what came before it. Creation, the Garden of Eden, Abraham, Ab- Abraham and Azek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remix. <laughs> <laughs> the flood. It all happened, and so it will be with Watchmen. His Bible. The comedian died. Dan and Lori fell in love. Ozymandias saved the world, and Doctor Manhattan left it just after. Saved blowing. the world's yeah, an interesting way to phrase yeah, that. Yeah, that, that is funny. Mm. Uh, 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 Doctor Manhattan left the world just after blowing Rorschach to pieces in the bitter cold of Antarctica. So that's sort of our weird section where uh, he's dense and vague and mysterious. Uh, that um, Bible thing. And the Lord said, "Drop your blue wiener on top always- of their heads." <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Very biblical. Um, <laughs> more Old Testament. But yeah. uh, the, it's always uh, setting a nice low bar when you compare your work to the New Testament. <laughs> Guys, this will just be like the Bible. the Bible. I don't know. Uh, a, a loose collection of letters that don't really tell a strong narrative. Um, it's not very exciting read. Was that a Bible diss? It kind of was. Wow. I don't know, man. Wow. I'm, in, I'm in a weird place today. <laughs> Yeah, it's, a five, it's a five-page letter. Look, he started it. <laughs> I'm, yeah, next episode will just be... I'm going to do uh, It Could Have Been Worse, The Bible. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> nice knowing you. We're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> see you guys later. We're going to get um, letters. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, so he's gone on to say that the story will follow new characters in a post-Watchmen world. But we're not making a sequel. The story will be set in the world its creators painstakingly built. But in the tradition of the work that inspired it, this new story must be original and not a. It has to vibrate with the seismic unpredictability of its own tectonic <laughs> plates. It must ask oh new questions God. and explore the world through a fresh lens. Most importantly, it must be contemporary. Uh, that last sentence I agree with. If you're, you gotta. If you're gonna do this, don't just rehash what Watchmen had to say when it first came out. Like. You got to talk about Snapchat. You got to talk about yeah. live streaming <laughs> on Twitch. You got to talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, slime videos. But that's what I'm, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I, I don't. I don't know that I need to see Rorschach's illegitimate kid on Instagram or something. Oh, you Rorschach I mean? is totally a men's rights activist. <laughs> yes, <laughs> women, uh, feminazis, <laughs> equal pay. Everybody laugh. They changed the gender of my favorite heroes. <laughs> Oh, that, <laughs> everywhere. That, that's what they're gonna do. There's gonna be a female Rorschach. Oh yeah, no, he'll hate that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This seems like um, the kind of thing you write and then you give to like the writers room. You don't post this in public. You're like, this is the ambitions that we're gonna yeah, set. Yeah. You don't release this to the world before you've written it. Yeah, this yeah. is this is what he. Uh, was supposed to put on the bulletin board in the writer's room or something so they could look at it every morning. Yeah, be like, we gotta be contemporary, we're the New Testament, like, okay, let's do this. Yeah, and then he published it. It's very ballsy. I hope, look, I hope this is awesome. It's HBO, uh, Damon Lindelof has an interesting track record, but he's he's had some big hits, and like, good for him for Babe Ruth pointing over to the left field fence, and then he's gonna take a swing, so uh, uh, it's definitely pretty boastful, but uh, I hope they clear it. I hope they clear that bar. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've been a very outspoken advocate of I want to, to, to see a long-form adaptation in the sense that, like, while I'm not a fan of Zack Snyder's movie, I don't really know how you could do it much better, given mm-hmm. a feature-length constraint yeah. and doing what you have to do and looking at the, the source and trying to jam all of that into one. Like, I don't know how you can do a whole lot better than that. I think that was probably with some changes about the best version that you could get of a movie version of The Watchmen uh, in the sense of just like adapting it. There's some tonal things that I don't agree with, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, so when they said they're doing a Watchmen series, I'm like, that's cool because I th- there's so much in that original story that if you expanded it to eight hours, I think you could really delve deep into it and get at the heart of it. And hmm. You know, the squid thing, which I agree, you can't do the squid thing in a two hour movie because it's just impossible to set up that, I I think, realistically. And then actually do it. But a miniseries, maybe you could figure that out. So I am a little bit disappointed that they're not going for a long form. I I see why they're not. But this is just kind of, I I don't know. I love a lot of Damon Lindelof's work. My criticism has always been like he tends to become victim to his own. 
I don't know. He just seems to get in his head, and sometimes you this, mean, this, this, <laughs> this, this is like it's it's like it's a sequel, but it's not. But it's a remix. Mm. But there's people in it that you know. But it's new. But it's not the original. <laughs> but it is. But it's not. But it isn't. But it is. <laughs> yeah. But it's not. And yeah. it's like, dude, just do the thing, man. Yeah, like you don't need so. to. You don't. I don't need 18 layers of what it is and what it. He just seems to get heady sometimes, and it's like, dude, just do the thing. Well, he's one of those people who just who's, do the who, thing. He really understands that there's going to be a lot of press about whatever he does, and he's trying to head off questions from the press mm-hmm. in a in a release so that he doesn't get those questions or something like that. That's what it seems like. I mean, in a smart, I mean this is a, a sort of a press release in, in a way that is so bizarre. Like, what, do you, what are the follow-up questions to this press release besides, what? Hmm? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Which is kind of brilliant. Um, look, I'm, I'm actually not going to complain at all about uh, this weird vision that he set out uh, just a couple weeks ago. I was bitching and moaning about the idea of an Amazon Lord of the Rings not mm-hmm. showing us anything new and... The thing I've heard since is that it's going to be about young Aragorn, and who cares? Um, so, yeah, show me something new in this world. Go for it. Yeah, like you said, hit that Babe Ruth yeah. home run. Although, counterpoint to myself and you, um, <laughs> is, uh, is like there's some things that you just don't have to adapt. No, uh, I agree. Watchmen is so specific to comics, and it plays with the medium of comics in such a specific way that to take it out of that medium... You almost have to change the story to be true to it. Yeah. Like, if you're making a movie about it, then a Watchmen movie should also comment on movies themselves if it's staying true to, to yeah. Watchmen. It should comment mm-hmm. on 15 years of the MCU. And, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, you just don't need to do it. <laughs> like, you but, can also not. Like, Well, also, sometimes, sometimes I, what I don't understand about sequels, prequels, threequels, you know, uh, squeakwolves. The squeakwolves. Yeah, yeah. any, any of those things is that nine times out of ten, the first movie is the most interesting section of those people's lives, the most interesting section of that world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nine times out of ten, Matrix. Anything after he flies up out of the freaking phone booth yeah. is stupid, and nobody cares. Yeah, you don't need it. And right. everybody knew that you know the it was kind of over. The story that you made up of Neo liberating everyone was far more interesting Way than better. actually watching Neo liberate yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. What a, so so I mean I think that that's the kind of the Mine crux. Had a much shorter rave. Yeah, I, I think that, that that would be that's the crux of my problem if I have a problem with this at all because I don't have a problem with people trying to make money, but geez, Louise, the most interesting thing in the world, a big blue dude and 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 a, a smart guy and a big blue dude had a had a tete a tete, and the world is forever changed. That was the most interesting yeah. thing that happened in that world. Period. Yeah. So the fact that you're gonna play some bass lines and do some wicka 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 after that, I mean, <laughs> you know. The most interesting part's already happened, you're right. Um, I'm curious what Alan Moore has to say about all this, because I'm sure it's hilarious. Well, he did He did say in the letter that um, he uh, reached out to Moore to explain why he has defied Alan Moore's wishes and is continuing <laughs> to just kick his creation in, in, in the big blue dong. Uh, well, so he, and, he said he at least uh, reached out, yeah, and, but and the Moore Falcon said, hasn't delivered the letter to his cave door yet, yeah, yeah, <laughs> so the, he hasn't gotten there. Alan Moore said that I have Amagato. Yeah. <laughs> I have says- the snake. That <laughs> <laughs> I was not to respond to your letter for more than six months. Is he more concerned about Alan Moore's wrath or about a curse from Glycon? Well, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, I the two are so connected. Yeah, uh, no, 100%. There, I, I'm, I hope... I, I hope that this isn't a cascade thing with Damon Lindelof and he gets so in his own head because he's just like, this, this is my father and he gave me the thing. It's like, th- I, this obviously means a lot to him and I hope that that mm. doesn't provide a blinder because I do think that there could be an interesting story to tell in the sense that I, my big problem with the movie and my favorite part of the graphic novel that mm-hmm. wasn't in the movie was that they left out the scene, which I think was the whole point of the story, which is where right before Dr. Manhattan leaves, he goes to Ozymandias's thing and he's like they have a little discussion and a tete-a-tete if you will a tete-a-tete if you will the word of the day is Um, (laughs) tete-a-tete they have a little discussion before he leaves and then like the kind of the the kind of final F you that Dr. Manhattan leaves Ozymandias with is Ozymandias says well at least I saved the world you know I ended it and he says John nothing ever ends and then he just disappears and he leaves Ozymandias like uh, 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 his name's not John Ozymandias anyway he leaves his like like kind of crestfallen and just sitting yeah. there. It's a great panel. It's nothing ever ends. It's just like you, it, which to me as a reader, I'm interpreting his document yeah. and saying like you're an idiot. 
you don't know anything, and everything you just did was completely meaningless. Yeah, right. They didn't put that in the movie, which kind of it became a line like literally like Patrick Wilson's like, "Well, John always said nothing ever ends." It's like, no, that's, that's you can't just yeah. put the line in the movie. Yeah, it's not yeah. the same impact. But but that I, but I do think that that maybe, and I hope because even here he says Ozymandias saved the world. I wish he'd put that in. I hope he's speaking broadly, or because he right. did. That, that, yeah. To me, that's the whole point of the whole Watchmen thing. Was like, you idiot! You you think you're a superhero, and you think you just killed all these people and you saved the world, and you didn't do shit. You didn't right. do anything, and you're more like I'm the only one that can see these things, right. and I can see that you're an idiot. Peace. I'm out, and I'm leaving forever. And I so I hope maybe, maybe the that's a narrative thread that I could see. Like, let's fast forward, and you're realizing that, yeah, nothing really does ever end, and Dr. Manhattan was right. And I hope that that's maybe where they're going to take it. So mm -hmm. there are some interesting ways. I just hope this isn't, like, the sign of a, a cascade failure of, like, mm. being too in his own head about what he loved about the novel. He's gonna not doing this thing. And I want to, I mean, you know, I want to see the old thing, you know, because he's always saying, like, I, we're also going to look back at the... At the at the you know the original team and it's like which okay but you know I just it just seems like I hope he finds a path through yeah. that's always been my thing with Damon Lindelof is like he seems he has some really brilliant ideas but sometimes it just they all get stacked up on each other. Well, I would also say what would you do if it was possible for you to do or if it was possible for you to get paid to do fanfic of stuff you liked as a kid? Mm -hmm. How often could you resist that? Right. I don't know how often most of us. I don't know. I think that. that I'd like to think that like my ego is small enough that I'd be like, well, I can't improve on X. Like, but what I about the baselines, do, though? I can't do better than the Watchmen. Like, <laughs> Can I improve his the own words? Of Police Academy. His own words. <laughs> sacred ground. I'm not gonna rub my nuts in sacred ground. Like I'm just gonna walk away. But you just did uh, Game of Thrones, and people love R. R. Martin's nuts, and you <laughs> and you remixed his nuts. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Oh. No, no, you and the, the general, general you. Oh, yeah. the general. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The yes. general. When did the, we do the that? general you? Uh, you know, uh, DC did before Watchmen, and it it was a prequel. It, again, the most interesting things happen later. So, what's sort of the point of like setting the stage? You can't set the stage any better. And DC sort of messed with uh, follow up elements in universe, which um, I, I haven't kept up on too much, but started uh, really cool. I, I will say that you know, in terms of fresh takes. Uh, he also says in this letter that uh, he's completely blown away by the writer's room he's assembled uh, and that they've already, like, some have been putting together, like, this incredible story that sort of already surpassed um, what he thought they could do. So, great. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I hope he's right. No pressure, guys. Right yeah. room. No, no pressure. No pressure at all. Uh, hey, guys, you want to talk more about uh, people trying to buy Fox? Sure. Like who? Uh, like Comcast gearing up for its final Fox bid, Spencer. Oh. I'm, I'm glad you asked. Uh, Comcast this morning confirmed its plan to make a rich counteroffer for the 21st century Fox assets that Disney has proposed to acquire. Uh, while Disney and Fox have agreed to a $52.4 billion deal, Comcast counter is believed to be in the $60 billion range. At that point, does it ma do numbers matter anymore <laughs> at that point? It does. So. Or are they Manhattan Depending level on numbers? Depending on the deal, yeah. Yeah, uh, if the only reason a firm offer has not been extended is the all-determining decision expected June 12th in the AT&T uh, Time Warner antitrust case. Uh, are they just driving up Disney? It's also cash. It's a cash stock. offer, yeah. Cash Ooh, versus the cash stock. Offer. Versus it's stock. not stock, it's cash money. Billy Business back there keeping <coughs> stories on track, running the TriCaster, fixing the cameras. Throwing sure. chairs. Testing chairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, thank um, you, Billy. I mean, yeah, that's the big thing. It's not only a bigger offer, it's not stock. It's not, here's the company, here's $52 billion worth of a company. It's like, this is cash money. Yeah. This goes in your bank right now or and installments. I don't know how it works. If you have to put a down payment down on assets, briefcases, uh, briefcases, Brief case uh, by briefcase. It's deal or no deal. Do they have a chance of losing it? I don't know. But yeah, cash versus stock. That's a big one. What, what would you do with uh, sixty cash. billion dollars, Dan? What would I do with sixty yeah. billion dollars? Oh my cash. god, cash. <laughs> uh, well, I would hire a great security. <laughs> First and foremost, I had $60 billion in cash on me. It's been $1 billion I would hire, security. I would hire The Rock to be my personal security guard. Mm. Uh, I would uh, just reenact, reenact uh, all of the events in blank check. 
<laughs> you'd hire someone to hit your to run over a bicycle in a parking lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I would actually. Here's even better. I would try to blank check a kid without him like realizing we were doing. It. I would just pick a kid at random. Run over his like, bike. Run over, over that kid's bike. bike. And and give him a, yeah, I would just start blank checking kids. Hope you're, <laughs> be fun. I hope you're a Brian Bonsall fan, kid. <laughs> It'd be fun. See what they come up with their with their million dollar blank checks. Yeah. How do you know they wouldn't write that blank check for sixty billion dollars and now you're well, destitute? Well, I, I just hope that kid's not an asshole, Dan. Well, who the hell cashes that check? I gotta show fifteen forms of ID to do anything. Who cashes a sixty billion dollar personal check? Who are these people? Uh, just like in the the guy who's at uh, Bank of America, it's his second day. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, oh, my manager. No, you don't. No, no, you're fine. Manager, we have sixty billion dollars. How I'm would you like that, sir? <laughs> Enjoy. Quarters. <laughs> Quarters. <laughs> just socks full of quarters, buddy. Uh, speaking of socks full of quarters, Michael Blay, Michael Buble, Michael Bay. <laughs> Bay and Buble. It's a weird Buble Bible day for me. Michael Bay plus Ryan Reynolds plus Netflix. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Netflix will be producing a new Ryan Reynolds action film called Six Underground, which will be directed by Transformers Michael Bay. It was written by Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese. You guys know them. They wrote the Deadpool stuff and the Zombieland things. Uh, Six Underground is expected to begin production this summer and will be released on Netflix in 2019. It will reportedly revolve around six billionaires who fake their own death and form an elite team to take down bad... <laughs> sure, take down bad guys. That's what they would do oh, with their God. $60 billion You think Batman's cool? You know it's real cool? Six oh. Batmans. Six Batmans. <laughs> six Batmans. <laughs> That was Michael Bay like saw all of these superhero (laughs) movies and was like stewing that he hadn't had one. He just called him. It's like I want six Batman (laughs) in my office now. Oh my god! A van just pulls up and grabs Rhett Reese. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, six billionaires. You want to do some good in the world? uh, uh, Point your gun at the billionaire next to you and pull the trigger. Yeah, it's, like, it's like the last scene in Wanted, just boosh. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> arm and bullet around them. Oh, everyone's saved. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's the it's angle probably not the movie. Probably not no, no, Michael Bay's version of that movie is exactly that, but there's a great American flag that's somehow also in focus oh, in the background. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. flowing in the wind. Yeah, just flowing. <laughs> and it's indoors, which is weird. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I've still always thought of him as the voice for the 99%. I don't know. Yeah, Michael <laughs> Bay. Yeah, he gives the people yeah. what they want. Yeah, he does. So, yeah. Uh, in a weird yeah. way, he is. Um, yeah. How do you feel, Dan? I just, I, 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 I want to go back. To, I, it, it's we're at a point where I want to go back to college and get a degree in like economics or something because mm. I just, I just still don't understand how it works. <laughs> I don't. I, no, I really don't. Spend money how to make money, Dan. How does the dollars is able to spend at will? I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars mm. on development. I mean, this Martin Scorsese thing supposedly is like a hundred yep. million. The, if this is a Michael Bay movie, this is probably going to be a hundred million. Bright was what tens of million, fifty million dollars. You know, they you see they they shell out, they spend fifty million dollars at Sundance and ten million dollars at Cannes. Like I, I well, think about how I much money they save. How it works. They save a lot of money by never reading the scripts or asking for cuts. <laughs> I guess <laughs> they, they don't have a guy who does that. Yeah. I mean, it's just. It, it, I want to figure out how they made a business where you can just write a check for anything and everything that you want. It doesn't matter how much it costs or how much it is, and it's no problem. Yeah, I, well, that's one of the guys I blank checked. Um, <laughs> yeah, I blank checked him. John Netflix. <laughs> John, John Netflix. Johnny Netflix. <laughs> uh, I, I honestly think the next phase of Netflix will be um, some kind of ad campaign telling you how cool it is when you have your own Netflix account and don't use a family member's anymore. Like, hey, oh, yeah. man, you know what's rad? Like, that'll be the next phase of uh, Don't Pirate Movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. It'll, yeah. it'll be it'll be like some guy and a chick, and they're sitting on the couch, like, that's Netflix and chill. Sure, Todd, whatever. And he starts breaking out his grandma's account. He's like, yeah. that's lame. And she puts her clothes back on. Or something. Yeah, just yeah. walks away. And he's like, ah, the sexual marketplace and yeah. Netflix have cost me again. He somehow like, deflates into the couch. And says, yeah. That's your brain when you don't have your own Netflix account. Yep. <laughs> Call us, John Netflix. Dude, we'll I, think make we your ass. I think we just yeah. cracked the story on this so, ad. I mean, I know they bring in an ungodly amount of money with 
monthly fees and stuff. But uh, st- it still is just like, is there a, what, staggering, is there a yeah. limit to this? Like, my God, you're, you're buying I think everything. they anticipate. Right now, it seems like everybody has a Netflix account. But I think they really anticipate everybody having one. Like, everybody having a cell phone. Mm-hmm, you know yeah. what I mean? I think they really anticipate a, uh, in a world where everybody yeah. has nine dollars, you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Their audience I th- is the entire world. Like they're going global. Yeah. Like they've almost run out of subscribers to get in uh, uh, the U.S. Yeah. So they have to like, all right, let's see what uh, let's uh, Port- yeah. Portugal wants to watch. Or like they have to go completely worldwide. Yeah. Which I they are, but I guess they have to go even more. Like is they have Netflix to go everywhere. different in different countries? Because yeah. yeah. we, we yeah. have a lot. Because I'm about to say like you know some some dude in Antarctica is watching like the Inuit tribesmen uh, like house hunters like house, house hunters, hunters. Yeah. yeah like this igloo is too big this igloo is too small you know what I mean it's like oh this igloo is too far, it's too far of a commute from the river you know well, I, mean? I know that the the localization <laughs> that they do is insane because like for um, uh, they'll make one like original series in English and then it's immediately sent out to get translated into like. 30 different languages mm-hmm. and then re-uploaded uh, or redubbed and put out simultaneously all around the world. So it's well, a crazy international Okay, operation. I want to see the Bollywood version of this Ryan Reynolds thing with the billionaires. Oh, okay. Well, we had one, somebody tweeted us. I got to go back and find it again. But um, he had made a comment on how there were like two or three really well-known like German voiceover guys that do almost everything and he hates their voices. But it doesn't matter because they are going to be the main voices in almost everything he sees. Like one of them was Thanos, and it like ruined the movie for him. Like that guy just shows up in everything, um, and so I I do want to uh, uh, look into that guy's poor saga, where <laughs> just one obnoxious voice that he hates is the voice of all of his favorite movies. Uh, hey guys, someone joined uh, the new Men in Black cast. That's happening. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's on board, man. Jonah Hill, and now it's Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson. Tessa Thompson yeah. and Liam Neeson Ooh. has okay. taken up negotiations nah. ah. that's great. to join Hemsworth and Thompson in Sony's Men in Black spinoff. Uh, sources tell Variety. Uh, I want the source to just be Liam Neeson on the phone with them. It's like, <laughs> I have a particular set of rumors. Um, <laughs> Neeson will play the head of the UK branch. Okay, so he'll be, uh, he'll be K. No, wait. Q? L- Z? L? A? Who knows? What was Rip Torn's name? <laughs> oh, uh, they all have letters. Right? Zed. Yeah. Zed. Zed. Nice. Zed's uh, dead, baby. Zed's dead, Zed's baby. Dead. Zed's dead. Uh, so uh, he'll be playing the Rip Torn uh, role in this one. Uh, Played by Emma Thompson in Men in Black 3. Oh. oh. I only know that because I watched it on a plane a few weeks ago. Very good <laughs> nice. movie. How was that? I never saw the third one. Wasn't terrible. Okay, yeah. I, I, you know, it's fine. I oh, it. the time travel one with Brolin, right? Yeah, with Brolin yeah. and Jermaine Clement, and yeah, uh, yeah. And Brolin was really yeah, good. Brolin as a was young, good, uh, you know. It Tommy, was, it was perfect, Tommy Lee, perfectly inoffensive. I liked it way better than I liked Men in Black too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was pretty terrible. Was like, I, I, I hate movies where it's like, hey man, I spent a lot of time doing training and stuff. Spencer, you want to be my partner? Just after this one adventure where I dragged you through the whole adventure and you were pretty garbage, yeah. why don't you just be my partner? I hate those movies. You know, we have a connection. <laughs> I hate those movies. Book of Eli was like that. It's like, hey, Mila Kunis, you were pretty trashed at the whole movie. Why don't you be an outlander at the end because you just gained up. You, had, you went through, I guess, Luke Skywalker camp. Yeah. You, know, you just learned everything real quick. Yeah. You've proven yourself mildly competent. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Here's 50 times more responsibility. (laughs) (laughs) I just want, um, the the thing I always remember most besides water and sugar from Men in Black is um, Will Smith's outfit in the opening movie like uh, that weird like hyper color so he's wearing a jumpsuit yeah like, like jumpsuit, orange jumpsuit. Just, yeah i want chris hemsworth to i want that to be the nod to the first one yeah. is that chris yeah. hemsworth starts the movie in the same jumpsuit if liam neeson seems like a strange choice he's Very not smart. google liam neeson life is short and you will find oh he's liam neeson's Im- one yes. of the funniest great improv things comedy. i have ever seen <laughs> oh in my yeah with it's liam oh, neeson and ricky gervais and warwick davis oh yeah yeah, doing yeah, yeah, yeah. liam yeah. neeson uh, comes in saying he wants to get into improv comedy yes go look it up right yeah, now just, and no, you will no, see that liam neeson That's funny. is hilarious hilarious and yeah he's real you should funny. go watch that right now so yeah. i think this could be fun because chris Hemsworth is funny and tessa thompson's awesome and uh, Liam Neeson is great, and he doesn't get to he doesn't get to uh, bring out these chops much because they got him jumping over fences all the time. Still, well, with fifty seven cuts, 
Yeah. yeah. You know? Seven <laughs> takes. A lot of takes. Uh, so, guys, we're going to get out of here and let you uh, look up that video because you really should. It's hilarious. Uh, make sure you check out uh, the Honest Trailer for all the old Star Wars spinoffs. Oh, yeah. The Ewok Ooh. movies, the, the holiday, holiday special. special. Lumpy. Lumpy. The whole gang. Uh, Jefferson Starship. Uh, yeah. Everything. The kids girl. in 2018 want to watch. Mace. B. Yeah. Arthur. Um, <laughs> Uh, just keep saying names, and there's a good chance that yes, they were, uh, they Ray, were in Ray McClanahan, <laughs> <laughs> Paul Gleason from Die Hard, <laughs> Wilford yep. Brimley, Mary Todd. They're all there. Everybody's in it. Uh, Honest Trailer Commentaries is also up. If you want to watch us take a bit of a deeper dive and sort of watch our brains melt uh, a little more through talking about it. Movie fights tomorrow. Matt <clears throat> Noss, Joel mm. Monique, and Jay Washington. Mm. This is gonna be a big one. Probably gonna talk about a little. little I don't know. Uh, Deadpool, maybe a little bit of I don't know, all, all sorts of stuff going on in the movie hey, fights. You got a little Leno. Hey. 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 Have a good day, you guys. <laughs> bye bye, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>